Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, I'm Joni Young and I'm gonna show you exactly how to paint this winter landscape painting tutorial today. And we're gonna be using a two by three feet canvas. Of course, this is quite a large canvas. Feel free to paint this on any size canvas of your choice. Keep in mind that proportions will change slightly depending on the size and shape of canvas you're using. I've pre-painted an older canvas, light gray. I applied two coats and I let it dry. And I've got the following colors to start this painting with, sap green and black. I'm gonna be creating some trees here in the background that are gonna be kind of messy and blurry looking um, just for a backdrop against a snowy gray kind of sky. And then we're gonna be coming in with our little cottage here, fence, snow, and a pretty wreath with some twinkling uh, warm yellow lights. So let's begin. I'm gonna get my brush a little bit wet. This is a number two round brush I'm using. And I'm just going to take some black and I'm just simply going to start coming in with some branches. I'm not worried too much about making everything look um, super detailed or neat and tidy because it is a very free flowing background so you can afford to be a little bit looser with your technique. the same thing so just pulling and really feeling loose and flowy with my brush stroke you want to make sure that you add a little bit of water each time you reload your brush that will really help the flow of the paint and make it a lot easier Okay, and that's it for the first step. Right away, I'm gonna switch my brush over to a stipple brush, and I've got a um, number 10 Colorantic stipple brush. You can use any stipple brush that you have for this, any round mop brush or even an oval mop brush, anything, even a fan brush to just apply stippling brush strokes with, tapping brush strokes. Okay, so what I want to do, I'm not going to get this brush wet. I want to take some green and black. More on the green side though. And I'm going to start tapping all over. going to put some all over the background. It'll kind of create almost like a little frame around the house as well. And I don't have the sturdiest easel so you may notice that my canvas is moving around a little bit here. I'm going to try and steady it by holding it with my hands. I can start coming in and adding my snow. So I'm gonna be using titanium white today. And another mop brush. This one's a little bit softer and it doesn't say the size on it, but you can see it's, it's quite large. Um, so the trees that I'm painting are large, so that's why I'm choosing this size. I'm not gonna get my brush wet. I want to keep that poofy shape and apply paint only just by tapping like this. And I'm going to begin down here at the bottom. And we'll just start adding a light layer of snow. I 
and you can even change up your brush technique and stroke a little bit from time to time just so that it doesn't start to look too uniform and look like a pattern it's got to look messy and natural so sometimes you'll see me kind of do a roll kind of roll like this to apply the paint that can also help to give it that uh, layered heavy snowfall effect and then even sometimes we can create some softer areas just by dry brushing in little circles and slightly with a dry brush so just a little bit of that paint left in my brush I can go in between and that's going to make it look even frostier, mistier, blurrier for that background, helping to increase the um, sort of mood of this painting. I love old fashioned white Christmas, anything like that is what I kind of love to paint in my for my winter landscapes. Okay, now we'll come in and start on this side and I'm just going to get the top of the canvas the same way change it up, tap, twist and roll. And then again, just kind of twirl around. Remember, we don't want too, too much detail, so that's why I'm being a little carefree, loose, and messy with this. This is to create that blurry, out of focus background. Okay, I'm going to wash that brush out and I'm going to go back over to my liner brush and I'm going to add some snow covered branches. So I've got a long liner brush. I think I was using a round brush before. You can use either or. I like to demonstrate a few, quite a few brushes in my tutorials so you guys can get an idea of how each one works. So just here and there, twisting and rolling my brush. Not a lot of water. I want uh, these snow covered branches to stand out. Not really detail wise, um, more of brightness. So highlight compared to all the snow. And I will come in when the painting is just about all done and add a few areas that will have a little bit more snow. More towards the foreground next to our, our little uh, cottage. Okay, now we can start coming in with our cottage and this is going to be super easy. Just going to use a flat brush. And this one is a number 11, I believe. The numbers rubbed off on there. Um, just choose whatever size you feel comfortable with. You can choose a larger one or a smaller one. So I'm just going to take a little bit of white and I'm going to go uh, 
right about here and just paint a peaked roof. Right, simple. Just a little peak like that. And we're gonna go over top of some of these bushes and trees. And I'm gonna come down the side. And then across here, we're gonna have a bunch of snow here and our and our little uh, gate and fence. So we have a simple square and a peaked roof like this. I'm gonna just wet my brush slightly. Take some more of that white. And I'm gonna go across. Turn my brush over. Apply the same technique over here. Now you can go towards the center where the door will be and then turn your brush over as well. And then cut across. So it'll be sort of a rectangle here. Well, not sort of, it's gonna be a rectangle for the door. And then I wanna continue pulling lines up here that go along with these ones. And I'm gonna go over some of these to make them stand out a little bit more. Now there's a few brushes you could use for this. You could use, um, uh, well, definitely a smaller flat brush if you wanted. You can also use a rake fan brush to create whatever lines and pattern you want your wooden um, siding to have. I'll turn my brush this way and create lines like this. So I've got a few different ones. And you could, of course, pull it right over where the door is going to be because then we're going to we're going to be painting over that anyways. So if you're somebody who really wants to make something symmetrical and have everything line up, I'm not like that. But if you guys are, you can definitely go right across and then add the door after. Okay, I'm going to take uh, some more white and I'm going to go through in the opposite direction now for the door. I'm going to make some narrower lines. I could change over to a smaller, narrower flat brush, but I don't necessarily have to if I use my brush like this. And I'm not worried about this area down here because that's probably going to be, well, it'll be covered up. And then I'm just going to scumble over here and make this a little bit thicker. But I'm leaving it transparent so it looks like a lighter shade of gray or white. 
Um, and now I'm gonna come in with some black. I'm gonna take a little bit of black, actually a little bit of green too, with some white. Make it just a little bit darker. I wanna make sure that it stands out from the background. Okay, then I'm gonna come right down here. Under the roof line. And I notice how I'm kind of tapping like that. That kind of just gives it the uh, wood siding look. Okay, and because I have a lot of white or gray in my brush, I don't need to keep mixing that up in there. I'm just gonna slide into the green and the black to load my brush up. I'm gonna come down either side. outline right underneath and I'm just going to sort of scum pull this out because it's really going to look more 3D once I add the snow above that I just need to get a little bit of water on my brush to loosen some of that paint out. And pull another little line there. And I'm going to go across the top, just right above the door. I'm going to add a little line there. And then one right there, just for the hardware on the door. And I'm going to add some lines. I'm going to water my brush down, loosen up some of that paint. And all these lines are pretty messy and crooked looking. And I don't even care. It's gonna to add to the character of this painting. And I can come in at any time and just add some more white in there. To balance it out. So I'll do that right now. I'm going to add a little bit of white right inside here and here. Add some white. See how I'm holding my brush too? An angle like this and flat. I want to really get different textures and shades of gray and white in here. Add a little bit more of a shadow. Just 
just that grayish greenish color brush again. So I'll, I'll add a little skinny rectangle on either side of where this hardware is and then I'm going to make it slightly wider. And then add just like a little arrow for some decor. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and take my green with my round brush maybe just add tiniest bit of black in there and I'm going to add a wreath right here just by tapping lightly these little blobs we'll add the snow on it after so right now I want to go ahead and add some snow uh, to the top, the roof of the house, and I'm going to use one of my large round brushes. You can also use a filbert brush for this. Anything kind of round will give you that soft, lumpy snow look. So I'm just going to twirl around. Add a little bit here. I think I want to add a little window right here as well. So what I'm going to do is use a bit of white because I want to make sure that the light uh, yellow and orange that I'm going to use is going to show up. So I need to have uh, somewhat of a white underpainting. And then I'm going to take my black, maybe a little bit of green in there, a little bit of white in my brush, and just a little bit of trim around the window. It would be easier to use a flat brush for this to get those straighter lines. But if you steady your hand by placing your pinky, like I have here, you can definitely do it with a round brush as well. I'm going to go right through the center. I'll add a few lines. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of snow on top and a little bit underneath as well. And as the white paint starts to dry, you can see how it's starting to look a little bit see-through because we're painting over a darker background. So it's definitely normal to have to come in and do 
another layer, unless you want your snow to look a little bit see-through. Um, the Where it's a little bit see-through, it'll look darker, right? So that could also work as a natural shadow. Uh, just a little bit of snow right there. And even, let's even add just a little bit of it here on the hardware. I'm going to go back to my large uh, filbert brush here and just paint a thin coat of white for the snow in the background and the base here at the base of the gate. I'm going to make it really patchy like so that it's not super bright. I don't want it to compete with um, the gate and all the other highlights that are going to be close to it. So more of a transparent white, I guess you could say. Okay, I know down here that I definitely need, I'm just gonna pick up some more white here. I know down here is gonna be brighter white. So I'm gonna add a little section in here that's gonna be brighter. And I'm also gonna have a little bit coming down here, sort of on a slant. So just scoop. And then I'll just work out the rest. Dry brush or stumble. Both create the same effect. A thin transparent filter. warm yellow for the light in the window and I'm going to add a little bit of neon red for a pop of color and maybe a little bow that's uh, on the wreath and then I'll add the snow on the top or maybe actually if this I can actually add the snow first and then I'll add the ribbon I'm just going to use my little round brush again take a little bit of white and just start tapping and dabbing Add little bits here and there. Okay, so I'm going to take a little bit of white with my neon yellow. This is a warm yellow. And I'm just going to come right over top and even over part of the snow. It's going to dry darker. So the reason why I'm going over part of the trim and the trim through the window is to give it that glowing light effect. The trim on the window is going to uh, dry darker. So it'll you'll see it'll be more pronounced as it dries. And I'm going to go ahead and add a few little, while I've got this color, a few little lights strung uh, around the roof. And then I'll add the wire after. 
So we'll have one here. I'm just going to sort of stagger them. What well, about a few little lights? I love lit wreaths. And then just come in and add maybe just a little bit more color there. Okay, I'm going to take my red and I'm going to add a little bow. Take a little bit more, add a few little lines in here. I just love the mainly black and white palette for this with just a little uh, pop of color. I think that sometimes less is more and I, I seem to kind of go back and forth. Uh, sometimes I'll use a ton of color. It depends on what my mood is and what I'm trying to portray through my um, art and my paintings. But you really don't have to have a lot of color to get a point across or get an emotion across um, through art. As you can see here, it's got that old fashioned feel to it. Um, at least that, that's what I'm feeling from it. So I'm gonna continue along here. I'm gonna create the little wires for the lights. And I'm gonna use a really small liner brush here. And I'm gonna take a little bit of black. Just adding a little bit more black here for the door. Just a skinny line like this. And I'm going to make the trim on the bottom and the top of the window slightly wider than the side. Add a little bit more black and green in here. And now I'm going to add some, a little bit of white snow on the wire or the, the cord, whatever you want to call it.
Okay, now we can start coming in with our gate and fence. I'm gonna use my flat brush again. Before I add the fence and the gate, I'm gonna add a little bit more white to the background because it's drawing a little bit darker. Okay, so I'm going to start right here. I'm going to do two posts on either side. Add a little bit of black on either side. It'll make it more of a darker gray. And then I'm going to do a board that cuts across. And then one that goes diagonal. So we're doing this diagonal, these ones in behind first. Because the other ones will come in over top. top with our next ones. These are going to be a little bit shorter. So we'll do one right here. Another one there, there, and there. So we'll just make sure that they line up somewhat here on the bottom. have a few bushes here on the side and a lot of snow on the top so don't you don't have to worry too much about um, how the bottoms and the tops look the snow and the bushes will all camouflage that okay I'm going to continue along here I'm just going to bring this one up a little bit higher make sure those are higher up and then Continue along, adding a little bit of water to my brush as I'm doing this because I have quite a bit of paint building up in my brush that I need to work out. Take a bit of white here. And go inside some of them to give them a little bit of texture and pattern. So I'm going inside lightly, either straight up and down or turning my brush like this. 
kind of a light pull and drag. This is gonna make them look a little bit more three-dimensional. darker gray. And then with white, I'm going to add the bushes down here. I'll add a few branches first with my liner brush, my black and green, and water. Definitely need some water. Just little pulls and flicks and wiggles. I'm just going to lightly push and stumble around here, pushing flat with my brush. That also helps to build up that texture. I'm going to do the same thing over here. And then gently, I'm going to be gentle with the liner brush. And then just with my finger, blend out for a shadow here at the base. Before I do anything else to these bushes, I want to add a little bit of a shadow. So I'm going to take a bit of that black green dry brush and just add a little bit of a, a gentle scumble right underneath here. I'm going to do the same for underneath. The roof line, just a little bit, and the window there. Okay, now we can come in with our snow. I'm going to use my oval uh, mop brush. Push and tap into that white. Get quite a bit on there. more. And then I'm going to add some on the top. A 
I'm going to add a fresh coat right down here and have it slightly coming up the base of this gate, gate right here. bring the height up the snow here. A little push and twist like that will give it more of a rounded look. ones. We're going to add quite a bit of snow right here. few areas here we want to have thicker snow. Not a little bit snow covered bushes over here. Okay, the next brush I'm going to use is my flat brush, just another little flat brush. This one may be, oh, it's a number eight. I'm going to take a little bit of watered down black. I'm just going to outline the posts or fence panels. adding a little shadow right there and a little scoop under whoops picked up a little bit of weight there a little scoop for a shadow Add a little bit of a little bit more green this time to my watered down black. A 
Okay, now with just a little bit more of my neon yellow warm, I'm just gonna add a little bit of it. On my snow there. snow up here again. Okay, so the next step is to add a little handle on the door. And I'm also going to add a beautiful Christmas wreath right here on the front gate. So I'm going to be using my number 16 Filbert brush for the wreath. And I'm going to be using some sap green and a little bit of black to start. I'll be adding a little bit of snow on the wreath and making some red with neon red and black. And then my brightest highlights with my neon red just like I did here on the original wreath on the door. So let's go ahead and get started with picking up just a little bit of that sap green, a little bit of black, and I'll just mix it up. Get a little bit more of a generous amount. You want to have enough to work with on the tip of your brush so once you mix it you want to just push it on the end of your brush. And I'm just gonna start adding it right about here. I'm just gonna push and tap. Make it look a little thicker, so I'll do another layer or two. Okay, then I'm actually going to take a little bit of white and I'm going to start going around and tapping that in to give my wreath a bit of frost and snow and highlights. I'm going to be more generous with the snow up top, so I'm going to add more white. And then I'll add a little bit extra where it would kind of collect right in this little area here. I'm going to let this dry a little bit, and while I'm doing that, I'm going to move over to the door and begin painting the handle. I'm going to use my number two liner brush. I'm going to take a little bit of black. And I'll go down just about halfway, a little above halfway. And we'll add a little dab here and then go down and scoop. Go 
all just a little bit more black to make this window pop out. I'm going to rinse my brush out. And I'm going to take a little bit of white and a little bit of my warm neon yellow. Mix the two together. And we'll just add a little bit of a shine and highlight. And then I'm going to add a little bit more color to the window. And I'm going to let this dry a little bit more and add a few little lights in here. So I'm going to use the same color, that warm yellow with some white, same brush. And I'm just going to start dabbing it on. And I'll have a little bit reflecting on the fence. Just a little bit of that soft gold. And some over here as well. Okay, now I think I can come over here and start adding a few lights. Same color, just little dabs. Paint it the same way we did on the door. Or you can change your colors up. You can leave out the lights. I like to add a little bit of lights wherever I can. When I make my wreaths, I like to make my own wreaths and um, I get all those little mini lights and I wrap them around and they just look so pretty. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is make my dark red base. So I'll take some red, I'll just set it right there, take a little bit of the black, okay, get a little ball on the tip of my brush to work with, and I'll just dab, 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 a few little sections for those berries mix up again i've got quite a bit of, i took way more red than i needed but i'll be able to cover it and store it in the fridge and i'll use it for another painting okay again dab 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 and just go around Okay, now I'll add more red. Dab, dab, dab. So a few other color ideas that would work well for this would be um, some purples, turquoise, blue, like a beautiful cobalt blue. That would look really pretty. And we need a ribbon. So I'm going to paint my ribbon the dark base first. And I'll get a nice amount on the end of my brush here. And Just start creating a bow shape. So just some two rounded triangles on either side. Okay, 
and then a smaller one, which is hard to see right now until we come in with our brighter shade of red and then a wiggle, wiggle, push, wiggle, wiggle, push, make one, one ribbon and a little longer than the other. Okay, then I'm going to take red, the neon red, and I'll come around the edge, dab, 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 and then pull a few lines in, dab, 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 pull a few lines in. Now you can apply this wet on wet like I am here, or you can wait for it to dry. It'll work even better if you apply it um, onto dry paint. Okay, and then we'll do the next little one here. I'm gonna dab two little dabs there for the double bow. And then I'm gonna go and add wherever it goes out, out like this is where it's going to be brighter. The light's going to hit it when it pops out in those areas where it goes in is where you're going to have the shadows. Take a little bit of white, that warm yellow, some more red. And again, where it comes out. And a little bit more. Sorry for the noise in the background. Some people doing some house renos next door, apparently. And finally, some black, just straight black. I've washed my brush out. And I come around here. right underneath that first bow and then underneath the second. And you really don't have to do this step. This is just optional. It's a little bit extra if you want a little bit more shadows and highlights. I just wanna make this stand out a little bit more. So I'm gonna add that little bit of black and then with a clean brush and straight neon red. Let's fix the edge there a little bit. And then just gradually bring this together with a little bit more color. Now that black will show through once it's dry and we'll have a nice balance of shadow shadows and the bright red Okay, so this paint is all finished. I hope you guys enjoy this one, that you learned a lot and you want to paint along. You can share this video with your friends, family, and painting groups and tag me in it if you decide to share it online. I've got a Facebook group. You can share your versions from my painting tutorials there. And there's lots more waiting for you, plus some uh, wonderful gifts um, for my patrons on Patreon. So check out the link below for that, as well as my other channel called Paint with Joni for some quicker tutorials with just brush sounds, relaxing brush sounds, and some soft music. Take care, everybody. Happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and I'll see you soon in my next video. Bye.